Imagine a world in 10 years. You pick up your phone, the apps you use, the news you read, the very code that runs your life. Where does it come from? Shenzhen's controlled workshops or Bangalore's chaotic innovation hubs? This isn't just a tech question, it's about who shapes our future. The battle for technological supremacy between China and India will define the 21st century. Two titans, two visions, China's state-led top-down innovation versus India's bottom-up, entrepreneurial chaos. Their competition is the new great game played in the digital ether. This is more than gadgets, it's a clash of ideologies. China's government sets ambitious goals, builds national champions, and pours in resources. India thrives on open-source collaboration, global connections, and a messy, diverse startup scene. Which model will prove more resilient? The answer will shape every nation's destiny. The leader in tech will set global standards for AI, 5G, and the digital economy. This brings economic power, military advantages, and cultural influence. Silicon Valley's dominance is fading. The center of gravity is shifting east. Beijing and New Delhi are now the new poles of global tech. Both nations have risen from poverty to become tech powerhouses, producing unicorns and millions of engineers. Their rise is a story of ambition and relentless drive. As of July 10, 2025, we stand at a pivotal moment. The race has begun and the outcome is far from certain. China and India together are home to nearly 3 billion people, over a third of humanity. This massive population is their greatest asset, a huge market and a vast talent pool. In the digital age, data is the new oil, and these countries have more than anyone else. Every smartphone tap generates data, fueling AI and new services. China's population is 1.4 billion. India's is even larger and still growing. But it's not just numbers, it's how these people are coming online. China boasts over a billion internet users and a sophisticated digital infrastructure. High-speed internet, e-commerce, and mobile payments are everywhere. Giants like Alibaba and Tencent built massive user bases at home before expanding globally. China's Great Firewall has created a unique digital universe. India's digital revolution came with cheap data from Reliance Geo, bringing hundreds of millions online. Now India has over 800 million internet users, young, mobile-first, and hungry for innovation. This has fueled a boom in fintech, edtech, and e-commerce startups. Education is key, both nations produce millions of STEM graduates. China's universities and government R&D investments churn out engineers. India's IUTs are world-class, producing top-tech talent. Once these graduates left for Silicon Valley, now more are staying to build companies at home. The brain drain is turning into a brain gain. This talent surge is powering the tech boom in both countries. The digital foundations are set. The question is, who will build higher, faster, and smarter? The stakes couldn't be higher, the world is watching. China's tech story is all about control. The government and Communist Party are at the center leaving nothing to chance. Five-year plans target strategic technologies. AI, quantum computing, semiconductors. The state mobilizes resources, funds national champions, and protects domestic firms. This top-down model is built for speed and scale. Shenzhen, once a fishing village, is now a global hardware capital thanks to government investment. China's digital universe is vast, with few privacy restrictions, fueling AI development. The Made in China 2025 plan aims for global dominance in high-tech manufacturing. Billions are invested in semiconductors and next-gen networks. The state is not just a referee, it's the star player. This model delivers results, rapid growth, global giants, and strategic power. But there are weaknesses. Heavy state control can stifle creativity and risk-taking. Political crackdowns like those on Alibaba and Jack Ma create uncertainty. The focus on control can limit disruptive innovation. China's model is powerful, but rigid. It excels at mobilizing for big projects, but may struggle with unpredictable breakthroughs. The dragon's path is formidable, but not infallible. The world is watching to see if control can outpace chaos. The stakes global tech leadership, the outcome still unwritten. The race continues. India's tech model is the opposite of China's. If China is a disciplined army, India is a chaotic bazaar. Innovation bubbles up from countless entrepreneurs, not from central plans. The government acts as a facilitator, not a director. Initiatives like Digital India and Startup India improve infrastructure and ease business creation. The India Stack, Aadhaar, UPI, and Open APIs lets private companies build on public platforms. This unique model empowers the private sector to innovate for a billion people. The spirit of Jugad, clever, low-cost solutions, drives Indian startups. Indian entrepreneurs focus on frugal innovation, affordable, scalable tech for real-world problems. This gives them an edge in other developing markets, but India's model has challenges, infrastructure gaps, bureaucracy, and less coordinated funding. Startups thrive, 
but few reach the scale of China's tech giants. The system is open and creative, but less efficient. The elephant's dance is messy but full of potential. India's strength is its people's energy not state power, the world is taking notice. China and India innovate in fundamentally different ways, reflecting their societies. China excels at incremental process-driven innovation, making things better, faster, cheaper. Its companies master supply chains and rapid manufacturing, earning the title World's Factory. The top-down approach aligns resources for massive projects. ByteDance's TikTok didn't invent short videos, but perfected the algorithm and scaled it globally, a classic Chinese move. Chinese firms adapt and optimize scaling proven models with unmatched efficiency. India, in contrast, is all about software and business model innovation. Its IT services legacy means deep talent in software and problem solving. The India stack unleashed a fintech revolution, open APIs powering companies like PhoneP and Paytm. Indian innovation is collaborative, ecosystem-driven, and frugal. Startups solve for low purchasing power creating cost-effective solutions, AI diagnostics in rural healthcare, mobile learning on cheap phones, these are Indian strengths. It's not about luxury gadgets but tech for the masses. China's power is in execution and scale, India's is in adaptability and creativity, two models, two visions both shaping the future, the world will feel the impact of both, the race is on. Let's compare two icons, China's Huawei and India's Infosys. Huawei, born from state-driven ambition, is a global telecom giant. Massive R&D, government backing and a drive for self-reliance define its rise. It dominates 5G infrastructure, but faces global suspicion over security and state ties. Huawei shows China's strength-building hardware giants, but also its vulnerability, geopolitical distrust. Infosys, by contrast, is a product of India's open, market-driven ecosystem. Founded by engineers with little capital, it grew by serving global clients, not state support. Infosys thrives on human capital, global integration and transparency. It's a leader in IT services, not hardware. Infosys faces fewer geopolitical barriers but India still struggles to create global product giants. The contrast is clear. China builds hardware titans, India excels in software and services. Each model has strengths and limits. The world is watching which will shape the future. The China-India tech rivalry is global. China exports digital infrastructure and surveillance tech through the Belt and Road Initiative, building networks, data centers and spreading its standards. This expands China's influence but raises concerns about privacy and digital authoritarianism. China isn't just selling products, it's exporting a state-controlled digital model. India offers a different, vision-open, democratic and low-cost digital tools. The India stack is being shared with other developing nations as a blueprint for digital economies. India's approach is about empowerment, not control, open-source tools for digital sovereignty. This appeals to countries wary of dependence on the US or China. India positions itself as a partner, not a patron. The global contest is between these two digital philosophies. The outcome will shape the digital world order. The China-India tech race is deeply tied to global geopolitics. The US sees China as its main rival, restricting Chinese tech and building alliances to counter its rise. India, as a democracy, is a natural partner for the West, gaining access to advanced tech and markets. This gives India a geopolitical tailwind in its competition with China. China faces suspicion and pushback, making Western expansion harder. It's building its own tech sphere with Russia and Belt and Road partners. The world may split into digital realms, one open and democratic led by the US and India, the other closed and state-controlled, led by China. Countries in Africa, Latin America and Southeast Asia must choose which ecosystem to join. India could be the bridge between these worlds. The choices made now will define the global tech landscape, the stakes, digital sovereignty and the future of the internet. The world is at a crossroads. Who will win, China's dragon or India's elephant? Maybe neither. The future will be multipolar, with China and India as key tech powers. China's state-driven model brings speed and scale but risks rigidity and backlash. India's open democratic model is slower but more adaptable and creative. Each must overcome its own challenges to lead. The real question, what kind of digital world will they build? Will it be one of control and efficiency or openness and empowerment? This is more than a business rivalry, it's about technology's role in society. The code of the future is being written now, in Shenzhen and Bangalore, and the world will never be the same.